Hey what's going on folks, welcome to Console Tronics. Now November the 22nd is a day with a lot of history. For example, on this day in 1307, Pope Clement V issued a papal bull denouncing the Knights Templar, leading many conspiracy theorists of the late 20th and early 21st century to spin yarns of New World Orders and such like. But on November 22nd, 2011, the very first episode of Consultronics was uploaded, and even though it's the 28th as I record this, I thought I'd look back in time at that very first episode with some DVD style commentary, reminiscing at those simpler times, and seeing how far I come would be kinda interesting. So sit back and relax as I reminisce over some Sega Saturn classics. Enjoy. Oh, title's a bit wonky, not a good start. Oh. My. God. It's me, only much more handsome. That's right readers, today I take a break from commenting on random Japanese weirdness and instead step inside the Consultronics vaults and take a trip down memory lane by revisiting my very first video. Why you might ask, and yeah you did bloody ask. Well, three years in real time isn't very long, but in that time I've seen channels come, I've seen channels go, even my very first subscribers, Future Mac 5 and Ninja Behag, have gone into some sort of semi-retirement. Some of the old guard do still remain though, Luke Morse 1 seems to get better with age, while James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, has become the slightly annoyed video game nerd while he works on his movie. And speaking of uh, YouTubers who've been uh, around the block, I saw Steve Benway also upload a video on this game, Thunder Force 2, and while he played that badly, I didn't do too bad if memory serves me right. Now this video is a staggering 22 minutes long, which might seem a bit excessive or even self-indulgent, especially for a debut video, but I felt I needed to show off both games, Thunder Force 2 and 3, at their very best, in particular Thunder Force 2. As I said earlier, Mr. Retro Game Collector himself, Steve, is just me playing the game badly. Benway played this a little while ago, and while it's not a favourite game of mine, more people need to give this criminally underrated Mega Drive shoot 'em up a chance. Because, and this might surprise you, I hated this game when I first played it. I'll just give you a moment for you all to pick your jaws back up off the floor, but I'll go even harder than that. I didn't just hate this game. I despise this game. It's only because I was lucky enough to pick up a copy of Thunder Force 3 from one of my friends who didn't like shoot 'em ups and I loved it. And that convinced me to revisit this game and actually put in the time to see its charms. And it's got a lot of charms. The gameplay is so, so simple, yet so brilliantly executed. The big problem most people have when they first play this game is getting used to the control system. But these bases you're seeing me destroy right now, you take out four of them and you go to a more traditional shoot 'em up. And speaking of shoot 'em ups, I hear from the original commentary in the background that that's exactly what I was talking about there as well. The first shoot 'em ups I played back on my old Commodore Plus 4. I still have that original Commodore computer lying around somewhere. I don't think of it, I was going through some of my consoles the other day and I realised just how few consoles I actually kept. The original ones I mean. I've got loads and loads of consoles from 8-bit, 16-bit. Still have yet to get an Xbox One or PS4 but hopefully that will change in the new year. Oh and here's what I mean. Do that first level. Now had this been the first level to introduce the game, I think more people would have stuck with it. As you can see the game is switched now, now we're playing uh, horizontally. Now, in many videos I've talked about my love for the Thunder Force series. Uh, the series didn't debut on the Sega, it debuted on ja a range of Japanese home computers. Uh, the Sharp computers, Sharp X1, Sharp X68000, I think PC88 might have had a version. Um, Thunder Force 3 and 4 I think were Mega Drive exclusives. Thunder Force 5 would be on the Sega Saturn and PlayStation 1. Thunder Force 6, a lot of people don't know there is actually a Thunder Force 6 but that came out on the PlayStation 2. Unfortunately just like these uh, gold packs it was only available in Japan. 
And with the first end of level guardian dispatched, it's as good as time as any to talk about my channel. So, 3 years, 110 videos and less than 200 subscribers. Do I think it's been worth it? Do I still have that passion and childlike enthusiasm in my eyes like you saw in this video's opening? Um, I will say yes. I'll also be slightly unoriginal and say the same thing most YouTubers tell you and that's that I do this for fun and try my very best to entertain, hopefully put a smile on some people's faces. Unlike most YouTubers though, I wasn't inspired to make videos by watching AVGN or any other gaming channels. My inspiration to do this came from two Scottish comedians who armed with only a camera, whatever they had to hand and their passion for video games created what in my humble opinion is still the best video game review show, Consolvania. Robert, Rab, Florence and Ryan McLeod are the reason I do this. If you want to see why I rate them so highly, check out some of their stuff here on YouTube. Both still dabble in video game reviewing from time to time and are still funny as hell. And are we still on Thunder Force 2? Who's for skipping to Thunder Force 3? The eyes have it. And as I said originally, now we truly are cooking with gas. Thunder Force 3. While many consider Thunder Force 4 to be the best 16-bit version of Thunder Force, I've always had a soft spot for Thunder Force 3. And one of the reasons why this video is a tad on the long side is because I did something here in this very first video which I would never replicate in over a hundred videos more and that's I actually completed this game. And considering that the Thunder Force series as a whole is considered one of the harder shoot em ups on the market, I did feel at the time that I had to rest my gaming credentials on the table with my first video and just show what I was all about. Actually the original idea for this channel was simply to show off shoot em ups and fighting games. Eventually it would become more of a mixed bag. One of the reasons why I've got so few subscribers is because I don't think I've ever targeted any one audience. Well, there's always been a fondness of Japanese games on my channel, but I've always tried to do a little bit of everything. And as I mentioned in the original commentary to this video, this boss is quite simply one of the easiest I've ever faced in all my years of gaming. This guy has never touched me, not even once. I want to think of it. I don't think I've ever gone back to replay these games. Thunder Force 2 or 3. I did go back and replay Thunder Force 4 again. That was because I did plan on doing a video on Thunder Force 5 and 6. One thing I'll say about Thunder Force 3, the one advantage I think it does have over Thunder Force 4 in particular is the levels are so fun to play. I did re-watch this video before I did this commentary just to sort of bring myself up to speed. I'm not a fan! Um, if anyone out there is actually watching this who actually makes YouTube videos. Does anyone else go back and watch their own stuff? I used to, when I had a couple of videos up, I'd go back and sort of re-watch what I was doing. But I look at some of my videos now, in particular my um, Shinobi on the Master System, I, I cringe at just the very thought of it. Although, that being said, what I'd like to think the videos that I make nowadays are honed to perfection through trial and error and everything else, uh, I still make videos not only pretty much the exact same way, I still use the exact same equipment that recorded this very first video with it. I'm still using the same capture card, I'm still speaking to the exactly the same cheap USB Samsung Go microphone. But there is something to be said about just sitting down just chatting about games. Um, well I don't script my videos, I do have a think about what I'd like to say so I do have um, some points I'd like to raise or such like, 
With my early videos, I pretty much just talked. Now, a lot, a lot, I know a lot of people like to watch people um, waffle um, from Steve Benway's Friday Talkie to, um, oh, what's his name, Jurassic Junkie and his, what was it, his, um, his rant. I never quite got into the whole rant video thing. I'm not big on just watching people complain I mean it's, it's one thing if they've got a grievance about something that they were they want to voice but sort of doing um rant videos on a regular basis I've never really quite got into that no disrespect to the the Jurassic one though I do love this level in Thunderbolts 4 the levels are absolutely enormous but here um I've got on the max set. Here's got more of a claustrophobic feel. I know this game inside out, so it don't phase me. I don't know about any of you guys watching this, but I really want to play these uh, Thunder Force games again now. I did plan on doing um uh Thunder Force Five was originally gonna be my um my third video after the two gold packs. Uh what was my third video? I think it was Bujingai. Jingai Swordmaster on the PlayStation 2, um, one of the simple series games for which my channel, uh, if it's been known for anything, it's been known for doing the cheap and cheerful Japanese PlayStation 2 titles. I do have a few, a few more I uh, want to upload. And it seems anything with zombie in the title, that there seems to be my most watched videos. So... We've talked about the past, we've talked about the present. What does the future hold for Consultronics? Well, for anyone who's been watching the channel recently, any new subscribers who are checking this out, um, I've been doing a few top 10 lists. Um, I've enjoyed doing that. I've got a few more planned. I've got a few more special episodes. I'd like to bring a bit more focus on um, actual consoles. I do a lot of gameplay videos. But I'd like to show off a bit of hardware. Um, not so much the consoles that everybody knows, like the Mega Drive and uh, um, Super Nintendo. Some of the more ex obscure systems, or the systems that people don't see every day. Kind of like um, the Bandai Wonders one. I'd love to get my hands on um, the Bandai or the Apple Pippin. That kind of thing is really expensive. And with the amount of games through it which total about seven it's not really worth the kind of money that people are asking for it um i did mention that the very first thunder force game was available on a line of japanese home computers i would love to get my hands on a sharp x68000 and have many times been tempted to part with the kind of money that um you see it going for on youtube to get uh, to get one if I do, trust me, you guys watching this, you, you'll be the first to know. I think, uh, where are we now? I think this is the last level. We're coming up to it. Now I mentioned that um, I actually finished this game. And a lot of the levels require... That's what I'm talking about. Require movement, require knowledge of like um, positioning. Oh yeah. I remember this bit now, yeah. There's a certain section here where you have to position your ship, and if you do that, you'll have absolutely no trouble. Yeah. So, as much fun as it has been to just sit here and talk about video games and reminisce a little, I don't think anyone really wants to sit down for a whole 22 minutes watching old footage. So, who wants to see me defeat the last boss of the game? Bam! Never let it be said that I don't give the punters what they want. This boss is now the only thing standing between me and finishing the game. And he is really, really difficult. He's got many forms, and as you can see, there's a lot going on. This was actually a bit of a tussle, I seem to remember. Um, anyone watching this who's maybe thinking about picking up the Thunder Force Gold Packs, um, they are a cool thing to have as long as you don't pay too much for them. They are just straight 
ports of the Mega Drive releases. So if you can pick them up on the Mega Drive for a decent price, it I would highly recommend it. And if you're in the UK, Thunder Force 4 runs at 60 hertz, so full screen, full speed, without the need to have a chipped console. And I think we're done. Thunder Force 3, one of the hardest shoot ups on the Mega Drive, been finished with these. You know what? I've had a lot of fun just sitting here talking nonsense and watching, uh, I'm watching some one of my old videos, my very first video, not my best, but one I got a lot of fond memories of. So you know what, I think as the ending plays, we should wrap things up here. For everyone who's got to the end of this video, thank you for watching. Please continue to support Consultronics, and if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe? So, my name is Cray, this is Consultronics, I'm out here. See you soon with a brand new video. Thanks for watching, uh, Layers.